Hello, internet users, and welcome to another video. So, uh, first off, thank you for 500 subscribers. Yeah, that's honestly a big feat, and I wasn't expecting that. You know, I wasn't nearly anticipating 500 subscribers, but hey, that's what happens when you get enough people to like Magical Star Sign. But, uh, that uh, doesn't really matter right now. Because right now, uh, you guys asked some questions, and I'm gonna answer them. So I hope you enjoy this, uh, you know, Smash Bros. gameplay in the background. I'm recording this in advance and differently, you know. A whole lot of different stuff is going on, so we're just going to some strange with the questions that you guys asked me, and, uh, yeah. Hope you guys enjoy the video, and if you want to see more, then just subscribe for other stuff. Let's start off with the first set of questions. This one comes from Leafman22. Do you watch My Little Pony? And and uh, who is Best Pony? Uh, the answer is no. I don't really watch My Little Pony. I, I watched like one episode and it was like, eh, don't really like it that much. But it's not awful. It's I wouldn't say it's like it's one of those shows that's like I never got to see it when it was premiering or new episodes and all that type of such. But I will say, I do like Fl Fluttershy. That's the only one I actually know, and I actually like the character. I don't know. That's the only one I, I know, and I just like the shy type of characters. The only one I know is Discord, but that's only because of the Living Tombstone song based around it. And I don't really think that really counts, but oh well. Next question is, what is your favorite Pokemon type? That's a weird one. I, I've never really considered Pokemon types into consideration. Overall, I think Psychic type is probably my favorite. There's a lot of unique things that you can do with psychic types, and I personally, I think a lot of cool Pokemon can come from psychic types, and uh, most of them are bangers, let's be fair. Of course, there are the misses here and there, but hey, psychic is really awesome. What is the first video game that you have ever bought? That is Sonic Heroes, actually. I remember buying it for the GameCube back in like 2003 or 4, and that was the first game I ever got close to beating. It was a fun game, like I wouldn't say it's like one of my favorites right now, but it was definitely the first game I ever bought and completed up to an actual point. Some people would probably think it's a magical star sign, but actually no, that comes a little bit later into the timeline. <laughs> yeah, Sonic Heroes, that's my first game and that got me into the Sonic series. Why not? Fun series, fun game, uh, I think it's underappreciated. Alright, the next kind of questions comes from... Kurai041705 Excluding Bree, who is your favorite character from Magical Star Sign and why? I don't know why they think Bree Fiori out of all characters is my favorite, but I guess it's because I frequently joke about her a lot, and yeah, she's got a clickable design, if you will. <laughs> but uh I think honestly my favorite character from Star Sign is a toss-up between Mocha, Chai, and Master Chard. Master Charge is simple to explain. I love his design and his dialogue is hilarious, so I, I definitely think that's good. Mocha has the most amount of screen time, and I think that makes it a lot more interesting for a character. And since he had the most screen time both in Vacation and uh, Star Sign, so I think that makes that evens it out. I think he has a lot of cool abilities and a unique design that I really like. Also, just has a lot of character growth. I like I like that a lot. And Chai, I think he was just kind of a recent development. Ever since I started my first video, I just kind of joked about him being my favorite and underappreciated, but it kind of he kind of just grew on me. He's just kind of that little cute little sly little guy, and I kind of like that about, about him. So yeah, that's my top three favorites. Uh, most of the characters I don't really dislike as much as I would think I would, but hey, uh, those are my favorites. Question three comes from the Noble Thief. Which non-boss enemy do you have the strongest memory of? The Zap Hounds from the Klasini Caves. Uh, those lightning dog bastards are fast and made my trip through the first time trip through the Glacini Caves a nightmare. So uh, dealing with them was a lot challenging, and I have some strong memories about them. Of course, I don't. I know how to deal with them now. I just have to grind the wing sets. But God, the first time going through it was a nightmare, and I cannot retain those battle scars. God damn, I hate those creatures so much. Question 4 comes from Arethrosites. 
What is your favorite arc of either Magical Vacation or Magical Star Sign? I guess I'll give both. I, I don't really remember most of the arcs of Magical Vacation that well. I, I think the only one that I kind of liked was, like, the one that was most memorable to me is the opening. I just think having all the characters there is super sweet and charming, and you get some cool character interactions here and there. It's the most variety that you get in the beginning of the game. But other than that, most of the other arcs are... I think the second favorite is probably when Candy is possessed by an equal low crew, and when all the characters are trying to resurrect her from that possession or whatever. That's another highlight, and I do like that part. Uh, as for Star Sign, I think my favorite arc is probably the holy tree section with Simona and Farna, like with Gran on fire, that was a cool set piece, uh, the, just the entire ending part of Gren, that was an emotional wreck the first time when I saw that, I felt so bad for the characters even if I didn't really know how to read most of the time. You know what, it was fun, I, I, I enjoyed it, it was sad now looking back, but hey. Those are probably my like two, three favorites of the arcs. Question five is come from comes from the Forgotten Pirate. Which elements from Magical Vacation would ha would you have liked to see in Magical Star Sign? I already made a video about this, about the remaking Magical Star Sign Revolution, all that such. Five come to my mind immediately. That's ancient, lightning, poison, beast. And, uh, what's the last one? I'm trying to remember. Insect, yeah, insect. I think my favorite, most likely one, what I'd love to see would probably be, uh, probably be ancient, because I feel like you do a lot of creative stuff with ancient type magic, and an ancient planet would sound genuinely sick, and I had a lot of fun designing that one. But all the other ones, uh, I don't really see, like, Blade fitting into Star Sign that well, or Love, or even, like, Beauty. Like, I like those elements in Magical Vacation because they're powerful, but, like, not in Star Sign because I don't think they would fit into the world that it would naturally fit. That's why I chose those five elements initially. Question six comes from Marty Y. Chan. That's three questions here. What made you start this YouTube channel? That's a tough one. I, I, I don't really have a clear indicated source. Like, I back in, like, the day of, like, 2012, 2013, I remember me and my brothers were just kind of like goofing around the home family computer watching YouTube poops all day, and like we, we thought that was hilarious, we thought that was something like we really like to see, I, I, I wanted to make one of those one day, and I mean, I, I never really took that direction. I don't really have a clear influence either for the most part, I think I just kind of like what I like to see. Like what I'm currently watching is something that I want to adapt into my own style of anything. I don't really have like a clear style if you've noticed, I kind of just mishmash a lot of different type of like styles of content. But I guess the insp main inspiration, like just the idea is just wanting Magical Star Sign to be more open to the public. and. Considering that we have a lot more fan arts, even like, even like YouTube videos, and hell, even like maybe even games, I I think this is kind of working out. The fact that I have 500 subscribers means that, yeah, this is kind of working, and I'm happy because of it. The second question is, what type of videos do you enjoy making the most? Ah, uh, that's a tough one. I, it kind of depends on like my mood for the most part, like. Occasionally, I like to make them. Um, I think my favorite first one that I really enjoyed making was. I think it was uh, Magical Star Sign, like the tutorials. Like, I remember, like, kind of just flaunting off my knowledge of that game. Like, it was something I really liked doing, and I didn't really know how to express it all that well. And, like, the fact that that was just a series I liked making, that was something else. But at the same time, I don't like getting burnt out. So I also just kind of like making like random gameplay videos here and there, whether it's just like a one-off or the Smash Bros. A Spiritless thing. Like those are also videos I like to edit because it's a nice break to get the bigger videos out of the way, you know? Something like this is also like an easy one to make. And the third question is, what do you prefer, Magical Vacation or Magical Star Sign? This is a big one. This is a really big one. Like, I think 
like, growing up, I played a lot more Star Sign than Vacation, but it mostly depends on, like, certain qualities that you look at. Like, I think Magical Vacation's visual design is a lot more beautiful than Star Sign's, but I think Star Sign's music is better than Magical Vacation's music. I think the gameplay loop of Star Sign is a lot better and you don't have to grind as much in those of the Vacation, but I also think there's not as much variety in Magical Star Sign than there is in Magical Vacation. I think the dungeon designs are much better in Vacation than Star Sign, but at the same time I think the overall story is a lot better in Magical Star Sign than in Magical Vacation. You see where I'm going here? Like, there's, there's a lot of things to like about Magical Vacation, but there's also a lot of things to like about Magical Star Sign. So I think currently, I still think Star Sign is my personal favorite, but that could change, honestly. I've been playing a lot more Vacation, and I'm starting to understand why people like that game more. I understand why Japan likes it a lot more, let's be fair. Next question is from Zave Thorn. Do you have a favorite enemy exclusive attack and slash spell in Magical Star Sign? That's another cool one. Um, I think my personal favorite animation-wise is probably Shadra's like signature move, uh, the Big Crunch. That move is just like essentially just a black hole that like destroys everything. I love the animation visually and how powerful the attack is. Like, like that's a final move right there, and I love that. It's a good move, solid. It does good damage, and damn, it will ruin your run most of the time. It's very annoying to deal with, but hey, it's worth it when you see it, because goddamn, it is a strong move. Uh, my boy, Magic Winsock, uh, gave me a congrats on 500 subs, and hey, gave me a lot of questions of work. Uh, first one is, how did you originally come across Magical Vacation slash Star Sign? I came across Magical Star Sign, I, again, I believe back in 2007 or 8, I remember seeing it at like a, like a GameStop or like a Target or something like that, and I was like, oh wow, this game looks kind of cool, and so I picked it up, and I guess I never put it down since. Well, no, I gave it to my cousin, and then he traded it away to a game pawn shop later on, and he didn't tell me that until like 8 years later, and I was like, oh damn, dude. But then I picked the physical copy up again at another GameStop, and I was like, oh cool, nice deal. And I revisited the game, and I loved it. And I, 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 at that point, I was just like, wow, I, I never realized how much I loved Magical Star Sign. As for Magical Vacation, I think it was just Mega Blade J's video on the game, actually. It was either that or just seeing it in the um, eShop on a website. Or not, like, on a, like a, I don't know, it was like a Twitter post or something like that. I remember seeing, like, it was a European exclusive, though, so I couldn't buy the game because I had a, a US uh, Wii U. That's what, what it was. So, like, I could never play the game until, like, what, 2022? When I, like, made the first review of Magical Vacation? So, yeah, that was uh, my first exposure to those games. The next question is, what is your favorite dungeon in the series, and what is your least favorite? Favorite dungeon in the series, by far, is uh, Drizzig Grotto from Magical Vacation. I think it has a cool dungeon gimmick where you have to manage your items very well. There's some super strong enemies that have enemies spawning left and right, and like spirits also spawning, so you have to use bombs or many different type of characters. I don't think it's like extremely overwhelming. There's a lot of like different routes that you could take to get like certain new treasures or to get more abyssal stones. You can get more abyssal stones to get the final like brownie partner that makes you super overpowered. God, it's such a good dungeon design, and it makes me realize how bad the Krogamar Caves is in Magical Star Sign, because it's just the opposite. There's like, there's treasure here, but like, it's not even out of the way most of the time, and it's super frustrating. Like, oh my god, it's super short too, and I don't like that about the game. Like, ah, yeah, oh my god, I, ugh, just you wait until I remake those dungeons, because that's the next video coming up. Oh god, Krogamar Cave's gonna be different. But trust me, uh, th yeah, those are my those are my answers. And number three, uh, what can we expect for content in the near future? Well, already I just said, uh, yeah, magical Revo magical star sign revolution part four, dungeon designs. But I also have a much bigger video planned. I already have the script completely done. Part of the script has been recorded. Don't know how much more it's going to be recorded because my current recording situation. And I need to find footage for what I'm recording for. So that's going to be difficult, but, but that's probably like a massive video that is not going to come out for some time now. And of course, I have other stuff like shorts planned and even like another Pokemon video. Like, I actually scripted, but I haven't recorded it yet. 
But yeah, I, I have plenty of content in the near future, so stick around. You'll, 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 it'll be worth it. Uh, next question is from Heliosphere number eight. If you had the given opportunity to collaborate with fellow creators, who would it be? Honestly, just the viewers of this channel. I, I kind of want to be like a collaborative piece for everyone that's watching or even like the magical star sign discord server. I feel like I would be really overwhelmed with big creators, but hey man, if you're willing to play through magical star sign, I'll be more than happy to be your, be your backseat gamer. You never know. But yeah, no, I, I'll be more willing to collaborate with all the other people in the server or even just like in general. Like if you want to make a video, uh, if that sounds interesting to me, then yeah, we'll make a video together. How about that? But if it's a game that I don't really want to play, then sorry, bud. I'm not I'm not going to give it to you. Uh, the next question is from TT Bacho. Do you think Magical Star Sign will ever be acknowledged by Nintendo? If so, what are you hoping for? And if not, same. I mean, there's always a timeline where Magical Star Sign will be acknowledged by Nintendo again, and if it's Magical Star Sign, it's more likely going to be Magical Vacation, because that's a much more Japanese exclusive one. And I mean, I mean, if Advance Wars can get a remake and like an old SpongeBob game get remastered in 2022, what's the like? What's the likelihood of? just an obscure JRPG getting different like mechanics and such like that you know so like if I had the opportunity to like make like a sequel I think like the the most realistic opportunity expecting is like a remake or like uh, just a re-release or like a like an ex like an expansion or something like that I don't know how it would work on like Nintendo's newest console because at the time of the recording it's not been shown publicly yet but hey again you never know I think personally I would like a like a roguelike game, like where you get your friends and like explore like a dungeon, call it like magical dungeons or something like that. Get all the cool rosters of characters and just like go around dungeons and solve puzzles. All that sort of such. That would be really cool to see, but again, it's kind of a hype dream at this point. Maybe maybe fan games, who knows? Question eleven comes from Catalella Catalella Fantasy. What do you think of Mangus Muzzle Flash? After drawing him like what three times, and just uh, dealing with Mag Mangus Muzzle Flash multiple times in my playthroughs, I mean he's kind of cool. I mean he's he's, he's 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 just kind of a big guy, you know. <laughs> he's just a guy, you know. He's a, he's a guy. He lived. He died. He screamed a lot. He's like Mangus Muzzle Flash, you know, like like all that fun stuff. It's like he's he's cool. He's a, he's a cool guy. I respect the villain. Not my favorite space police. That that's Bree Puri, obviously, because uh, woman. <laughs> Not drawing him again. Don't force me to draw him. All that fun such. Next question comes from Moonlight Selkie. First question is, what are some of your inspirations behind your avatar slash Sona? So if you guys haven't like seen like or on my Twitter or even just Discord in general, I have a couple of OCs, and by a couple I mean at least four. Uh, the one that you see on, like, the channel icon in the videos, I call him Buttermilk because I just think he's really cute. He's just, like, a cutesy little guy. I kind of based him off an axolotl and also just really like the color pink. Actually, the color pink came first, and I was like, oh, wait, this just kind of looks like an axolotl. And then, like, the tail part, I just kind of made it an aesthetic choice, but then later on, I decided to make it, like, based off his, like, personality and sort of such. So sometimes you get to see that in, like, backgrounds of art where his tail changes colors. And I, I want to dip more into that. Like, I want to become more of an artist to, like, showcase that. I just don't know how expressions work. So hopefully one day you'll get to uh, see more. But I also have, like, three other OCs that is more, like, focused in the back. Like, well, the next one that I made was a character I called Cotton Candy. Just this, like, sweet, like, big, like, goat bunny lady. Uh, you can definitely tell this is the furry side of me. I drew her once, she looked like a rejected puppet. Then uh, two of my friends made uh, alternate design concepts, and I liked more of the anthropomorphics approach. And then I gave it to a commissioner, which uh, made it a little bit bigger for me, and then gave it to another commissioner. I was like, okay, this is going in the direction I was not anticipating. And I was like, okay, we gotta size those back, all right? You two, please don't, don't get angry at me. But yeah, you know, this is a character I was like, okay, if I'm gonna do some other artwork, she's just a little silly. 
Actually, the next character I had was actually, like, a drawn by one of my friends. Uh, she, he just doodled this one, like, flock girl one time. I was like, y y I don't know what, he was like, I don't know what to do with this. And I was like, okay, let me just buy it off of you. So, $50 later, I just made a character and I called her Grapefruit. Uh, made her, like, kind of like this sassy girl who's just really angsty and all that sort of such. But yeah, like, I, I just wanted to make a angsty styled girl who, like, counters with buttermilk most of the time and all that sort of such. Uh, she's definitely more recent. I'm making a lot more commissions of fan art of her, so, you know, so expect to see that on, like, my Twitter and even, like, other, other sites that you see. Yeah. And the last OST I made by hand was a ant character I based off an enemy from Magical Star Sign. Uh, I call him Eclair. He's just this, like, ant boy hero shonen protagonist or something like that. I don't know. The details are still kind of rough with him because I don't really, I never really used him that much. But that's gonna change. I'm gonna make more, I'm hopefully gonna commission him a little bit more. Uh, he's just gonna be that little, like, guy you root for. Like, the again, the shonen guy that you want to root for in, like, the story. But yeah, those are, like, my OCs, and hopefully I want to make more. Like, I want to make, like, another, like, enemy type from Star Sign or something like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll see in the future. Uh, number two, what is the start of the video process do you like and dislike? This is a simple question. The part I like the most is script making. That part is always a joy. I love doing that. It makes it so much fun. Oh god, I, 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 don't, I don't know how to explain the joy I get of making a script. The hard part is actually uh, getting footage and editing it all together. Uh, that part can be really difficult and time consuming, especially when my laptop starts freaking out about the littlest overheating situation. Some of my projects get pretty big if you haven't noticed. <laughs> and question number three, what other game would you recommend to more people to try other than Magical Star Sign Vacation? That's a tough one. I, I honestly, I don't really know, honestly. I, I wouldn't really recommend. Just try what you, like, if you like to see something, then try it. I, I'm not really going to force it upon you. Like, I never want to force a game upon you if you don't like it. That's kind of like, I like, I know that's a, like the entire opposite about magical, like, Star Time propaganda, but I just want to make the game more public. But yeah, uh, play what you want to play and don't worry about it. This one comes from Anu Soul. Who should play Chai in a potential Magical Star Sign movie? First off, bold claim that a Magical Star Sign movie is going to exist. I, I know Chris Pratt might say that it might lead to a cinematic Nintendo universe, but uh, who should play it? Like, I know honestly because it's kind of like that sort of anime or so you have to go for like either like a sub or dub voice actor, but I have no idea uh, who would fit someone like that off the top of my head. Uh, Michael Sarah, but time traveled. <laughs> yes, that's my answer. Michael Sarah as Chai. <laughs> I won't take no for an answer. <laughs> Next question comes from my brother Sean. How does it feel to know thousands of people have been indoctrinated by your propaganda? I don't. I. I honestly don't know. I'll be completely honest. Like a lot. I. I again, reaching 500 is crazy. <laughs> but. You know, uh, feels great that people have been somewhat hypnotized by my propaganda, and I'm glad that people have taken notice of that pro said propaganda. And the other question is, uh, social security slash credit card number reveal when? Let me tell you, Sean, um, if you can make, like, if you can go into Blender and recreate every single magical star sign, like, sprite, and make it into a 3D model, send it to me, and then make, like, a fanfic that is longer than the Bible, I will reveal my social security card number at all. I, no, 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 no promises. And I'm starting to notice that this might be the end of the questions, because, uh, from Dupe D92 is, uh, well, there's a couple of, uh, questions that he gave me that I don't think are really serious. Uh, what magical star sign monster do you think would make the best one to marry, have kids, and grow old with? I don't, I don't know, the Mossling? He's kind of fat, he's kind of like a husband type character, I don't, I don't goddamn know on that one. The, the, the third one is... Who do you think would win a fight? Uh, Shrek the Six Year of Wool Sheep or Naruto the Selfie Monkey? I, I don't even know what that means, dude. 
I, 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 I don't, Shrek is powerful, but like, Naruto is Mar Naruto. So I, I guess Naruto, the selfie monkey, what does that mean? And then like, like the other question is, is Mewtwo acoustic? And he liked me a clip of the one moment where Mewtwo just kept side being off the stage, but like, I don't think he's acoustic. Also, don't say acoustic, that just sounds wrong. I then like the last one he actually said was Mukbang at 1,000 subscriber milestone. Potentially, that actually might actually be a th funny thing to do, I, I won't even lie. What I'm actually gonna do with 1,000 is I'm gonna cosplay as Master Chard from Magical Star Sign, so uh... Hit that subscribe button! But uh, the actual question that he asked is, what is your favorite thumbnail that you've made? My favorite thumbnail, that's a tough one. I that is honestly one of my favorite processes of making like like a video is the thumbnail. And there's a lot of like ones that I can list off the top of my head. Like I remember making like a lot of the collab like the like the miniature pack collection, like the anniversary videos, those were fun to make. Um a couple of the Smash Brothers ones that I made, I had to go into the game, green screen, like green steed stage, and then like work with what that happened. Other times I commission people like that <laughs> Like that one where people was like, hey, why is your character so thick? Uh, that was the best hundred dollars I've spent, but honestly, I think my favorite is probably like Honestly, simple as efficient. I like this Kirby one with a gun straight pointed of him and the video is just called perish and the last question to end it all off is is from Pal Mirius would ye one day play the Battle Bricks, a little bit of Roblox stuff? Uh... Let me, instead of that, I think I'll do a recreation of the mine, of the Roblox death sound. Oh! Alright, that's it! Uh, that's all the questions! Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, this is a different type of video entirely, and, uh, you know... So hopefully uh, we get to stick around to see 1000 someday and maybe even beyond. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.